Hello, friends. Hello. We are delighted you've joined us for another Fridays at Five. I'm Jeff Elliott. I'm one of the um, the producing artistic directors of A Noise Within, and you are. I'm Julia Rodriguez Elliott, also a producing artistic director. Uh, we are delighted to have you with us uh, today. This is our um, attempt to continue to reach out, to say hi, and to hopefully uh, share some programming uh, every week or every other week that we think is interesting, and we hope you will find so too. Um, so thank you so much, everybody, again, for joining us, and we hope you are all healthy, safe, and um, thriving. And now I'd like to introduce our Director of Cultural Programming, Jonathan Munoz Pru, who will introduce today's wonderful guest. Hello, everyone. Great to virtually share this space with you. My name is Jonathan Munoz Pru. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I'm the Director of Cultural Programming. Uh, first, I want to acknowledge that A Noise Within is on the ancestral territory of the Gabrielina Tongva tribe. And now I want to welcome all of you to A Noise Within's Fridays at Five Indian Classical Dance Workshop. Um, a little uh, bit about what to expect for today. We're having a 45 minute conversation. It's really a crash course. We're gonna cover a lot very quickly and it is an introduction to the fundamentals of Indian classical dance. Um, and then at the end, uh, we'll leave a little bit of time if there are any questions you want to uh, offer us. So with that, I'd love to invite our coach, our teacher for the evening, Shivani Thacker, Artistic Director of MKM Bali Stars. And she'll be joining us just about now. Hello? Hello? Hi, Shivani. Oh, we got in the space. That's the first hurdle. <laughs> So welcome. I just want to share with our audience briefly um, that uh, not only are you the artistic director of M. Cambali Stars, but folks may recognize you from the Noise Now Fridays at Five we had a few weeks ago, and they may recognize your work at A Noise Within when Bali Stars had, um, well, three collaborations. Um, uh, one was the Diwali block party on our front lawn. I think we have some photos of that we can share with all of you. And there were also a couple other uh, partnerships as well. So Shivani, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, your work and what brings you here? Um, so yeah, we've had this wonderful partnership. Um, we've done three projects together, which is so exciting. And um, yeah, I am trained in Indian classical dance. That's my first style. Um, then in Los Angeles, I've also trained in jazz tap ballet. And um, putting all of that together, um, Bollywood was also a natural outlet. So MKM Bali Stars does everything across the board. We do folk dancing, we do um, Indian classical, we do Bollywood, and we also do Western dance. Amazing, amazing. So, you know, I'll kick it off to you to begin. I think first we're gonna learn a little bit about the history, but I'll let you guide us through that. Absolutely. So. Um, I wanted to introduce what is Indian dance. Um, a lot of people might have seen Indian dance at festivals like the Diwali block party that we'd had. Um, they might have seen it on TV on So You Think You Can Dance um, or Dancing with the Stars. A lot of these TV shows have um, Indian dance represented. Um, but in a lot of these cases, it's Bollywood that you end up seeing. Um, and it isn't, um, in India we have so many different types of dance styles. So dance in India goes back 2000 years at least. Um, and originally dance and theater were one combined art form. So theatrical events had dance and music involved and it was an integral part of that theatrical presentation. Over time, the two forms have separated, um, but a lot of those dramatic storytelling elements have still continued to be incorporated and influence um, classical and modern dance styles in India. Now in India, we have, I would say, three sort of distinct categories of dance. We have our classical dance forms, we have folk dances, and we have Bollywood. Um, to give you a perspective of what these are, um, classical dance styles in India are very um, technical. They are the ones that really go back 2,000 years. 
and they have a very strong codified system of vocabulary, technique. Um, they incorporate both footwork and rhythm as well as expression and storytelling. And I would compare classical dance forms in India to classical ballet. So when you're thinking about the rigor that the dancer undergoes in terms of training, the level of mastery and perfection that is required to be at the highest level of performance and expression, I would say Indian classical dance would be comparable to ballet. The next category that we have in India is folk dances. So each region in India, we have um, very diverse regions in India, they each have their own set of folk dances. And in folk dancing, um, it's more of a community-based dance. These are dances you'll often see at community gatherings, um, religious celebrations, parties. Um, and I would compare this to um, probably people's experiences with line dancing or square dancing um, or more modern, maybe not too modern, it's from my high school days of the 90s, but the Macarena, you know, where everybody knows the moves and can participate and jump in and um, have the fun of dancing in the group and in the community. The last category, um, I would say, of Indian dance that we have is Bollywood, which is what a lot of people have seen in mainstream commercial culture. And that is actually the dance style that comes out of the Indian film industry. So, a lot of the movies in India, I'd say about 80 to 90% of the movies in India are movie musicals. So if you're thinking of like West Side Story, Mary Poppins, Chicago, they have these iconic dance numbers and they all have like seven or eight songs or musical numbers through the production. Similarly, a lot of our Indian films have music and dance numbers through the production. And in Bollywood, it's definitely an opener, um, not opener, a more open style um, that really likes to blend and steal from a variety of styles. So if the movie takes place in ancient times or is a period piece, it will steal a lot of classical vocabulary and influence. If it's a movie that takes place in the villages, it will have a lot of folk dancing. And if it takes place in an urban setting and is modern day, it often blends hip hop and jazz and um, whatever the popular style might be at the time. I've seen in Bollywood salsa and African and Highland dancing all sort of stolen and blended in. So Bollywood is sort of an amalgamation of these various dance styles. Um, in India, the classical dance styles that we have, we have eight classical dance styles. And so I'm going to just introduce them, but today our focus is going to be Bharatanatyam. Bharatanatyam is from south of India, and that's my style of training. So all the vocabulary and fundamentals we talk about today are specific to Bharatanatyam. Um, if we could just have the little slide of the eight classical styles. Um, while we're getting that up, I'm just going to start introducing them. Um, so we have uh, Kathak, which is from North India. And it is, um, so, okay, we have a slide up. So the first style you see on the slide is Bharatanatyam, which is the style that I just referenced that I do, which is from South of India. Um, some of the distinguishing factors of Bharatanatyam is the geometrical strong lines um, and the emphasis on the triangles. Um, and I will talk about this more when we get up on our feet. Um, but a lot of the positions have a demi plie, um, which reflects a diamond or a triangle. The next style on this chart is Kathak. Kathak is from North India. Um, and it is very often. Um, combined or compared to tap and flamenco. And um, the reason for that is that the emphasis in Kathak is the beautiful rhythmic footwork and um, the multitude of patterns and musical um, impressions that they do with their feet. Kathak um, also is a very um, strong influence into Bollywood. So a lot of the times when you see classical in Bollywood films, it is rooted in Kathak. Um, because Kathak was a very popular style in the royal Mughal courts uh, in northern India. Interestingly, Kathak has also been the influence that moved um, the gypsies from Rajasthan moved over to Spain, and a lot of Kathak has influenced the history of flamenco dancing as well. The next one that you see on the picture is Kathakali. Um, that is a uh, dramatic dance form from South India, from Kerala. 
And in some sense, if you're looking to sort of see what the dance form might have been 2000 years ago in terms of combination with theatrical or theater um, events, Kathakali is a really great example because it has still retained that um, epic theater um, structure. And you often see Kathakali in tourism videos with the green painted faces. The next style is Kuchipudi. Um, Kuchipudi uh, is the actually the uh, sister style to Bharatanatyam. It's also from South India. And my dance partner Shalini, um, who has been part of our Noise Within collaborations, her specialty is Kuchipudi. Kuchipudi and Bharatanatyam have a lot of similarities. I'd consider them sister styles. They have some stylistic differences, but they are both um, from South of India. The next one you see on the chart is Manipuri. Um, Manipuri is a uh, signature for their circular skirts. They also do beautiful drumming work. And um, they're also from uh, the northern, uh, northern part of India. And um, this part that's very close to Nepal. Uh, Moiniyatam is another dance style from Kerala. And their signature is the side bun on their head and the white outfit. And a lot of their movements reflect um, the fluidity of water. Um, that's a sort of telling sign of the, the movement style. Odyssey is um, from Odessa. And it is one of the styles that I would say is most depicted in temple sculptures. So when you go to India and you see all the dancers carved into temple sculptures, a lot of their positioning is very similar to the Odyssey dance style. And the last style, um, which actually just got added in um, uh, rather recently into the classical styles of India is Satriya, which is the last one on there. And yeah. That's so wonderful. I don't know if now's the time for this, but I know you're going to guide us towards a, a grounding to begin our, our practice Absolutely. today. Absolutely. So um, Bright Maximum is 2,000 years old, and it started as a temple art form, um, which was done to the gods. It then moved to the royal courts, and then it moved to the stage. Um, keeping this tradition in mind, um, we always start and end each of our sessions with what we call a namaskaram. Now, traditionally, the namaskaram was to take blessings of the Lord Natraj, which is the god of dance at theater. Um, but also, as things have progressed in modern times, um, we also think of it as a blessing or a salutation to Mother Earth. So that's how I like to explain it, is that we are asking Mother Earth um, to protect us during this time of practice, or if we were performing, um, to support us during our time of performance, to hold the ground steady, to not have any earthquakes happen while we're dancing, not give us any twisted ankles or splinters or anything of that sort. So we're gonna learn how to do the namaskaram. Um, and uh, we're gonna start by learning the hands. So we're gonna do more in hands later, but to begin with, this is Katika Mukha. Okay. The next hand that you're going to go to, so it's the first two fingers. Right. So the pointer finger and middle finger connected to the thumb. And I'll get up and show you exact placement. Let's just learn um, the hand gestures first. Then the next hand gesture we're going to go to is shikara, which is like a thumbs up. And we're going to place these upside down on our shoulders when we get to that point. And the last hand gesture we're going to go to is pataka, which is a flat hand. And the thumbs are in. So not in like this, but just Hut, yeah, so not sticking out. Very good. So we have Kataka Mukha, Shikara Hasta, Pataka. Okay. And we can pull up the close up on the feet as well. Just right. So we're going to start by having the Kataka Mukha right in front of our chest. I like to think of it as being close to our heart. Okay. Our elbows are up, so we're not dropping our elbows. So our elbows are up. And as you'll see right off the bat, um, what I mentioned about the triangles, you'll see that there are those triangle lines happening already in this first position. Our feet are together. We're going to stamp the right foot. We're going to stamp the left foot. We're going to take our shikara hasta, put it on our shoulders. 
We're going to turn our feet out. Let's go down into like a grand plie. Touch the floor. This is our acknowledgement of Mother Earth. Come to our eyes, to our chest. Then we come up, we take the blessings of our elders, our loved ones, acknowledge our friends and the audience, and come to a starting position. When the hands are above the head, um, you can think of it as if you believe in a divine power, absolutely. Um, when you come to the head, it's your elders and the wise ones and gurus your family and loved ones coming up to the audience and to the rest. Okay, so let's try it all together now. We're gonna go. And so we're going to start our session and remember this because we're going to end our session today with this namaskaram as well. Now, thank you so much for that. That's it's 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 so grounding to go through those gestures. I mean, I I cheated. I was I was sitting, but I I I did I did feel the sense of um there's a sense of ritual to that which I really Absolutely. Really it's I I you know, for people who are in the theater um, you know, you have that last minute before you go on stage where the cast holds hands and says a little thing of gratitude before saying break a leg, you know, it's, it's very similar to that. It just gets you centered. Uh, one of the things that has attracted me to, to your movement uh, in this work is uh, the hand gestures. And we've had many conversations about this and I love that you've given us a very brief introduction to it. And I think where we're going next is hand gestures. So absolutely. Absolutely. Offer us more. Um, and then um, whenever, if you think, um, if you are curious about the name of Bharatanatyam, I can share those details up as well, if you feel we want to go there. Um, so in Bharatanatyam, before we go to hand gestures, I do want to um, talk about something really quick, is that we have basically um, two main components. Um, the one component is the pure dance, the, the nrita. And it is um, the beauty of the dance. So it has to do with abstract expression, the joy of dancing, playing with the rhythms, playing with the melody. And we use our hand gestures in that um, aspect of dance. But again, it's for the aesthetic beauty. There's no storytelling, there's no meaning. It's the aesthetic beauty. The other component is the expressional or storytelling element of the dance. And in that we have nritya and natya. Nritya is the mime and the emotional aspect of the dance. Natya is um, the drama element. So by drama element, I mean that there's like almost the structure of a play, a beginning, middle, and end with a climax and a denouement. Um, the mime expressional emotional aspect of the dance may not have that story. It may be descriptive. It may be, you know, um, the dancer saying that she is feeling devoted to a certain god and describing the attributes of that god and expressing devotion per se. So there are these two aspects. In the expressional dance, these same hand gestures do take on meaning and they do tell a story um, and have um, a variation of interpretations. Okay. Um, with our hand gestures, um, we have 28 um, single hand gestures. I like to think of it like 26 letters of the alphabet. So just like we have letters A to Z that stand alone may not mean anything. They're just letters. Some letters like the letter I or the letter A may be a word all on its own. But otherwise, it's the combination of letters and the context that gives you the meaning. Similarly, um, our 28 single hand gestures um, on their own can take on a variety of meanings. It is the context and the facial expressions that give it um, the clarity as to what the artist is saying and what the meaning might be. Um, also in Indian dance, um, we dance to music that often has lyrics. So the lyrics the poet might be saying, 
um, one line saying, for example, if it's a if it's a maiden who's been separated from her love, her love is, let's say, um, at war. And she says that, oh, he's gone and I can't bear the separation. I feel so distraught. Now, that may be the line of poetry. The singer in a performance may repeat singing that line seven or eight times. As the dancer, my first time, I may express the literal translation of that line. The next seven times, I may build upon the story behind it. So I may show an episode of how my friend comes to um, put sandalwood on my skin, but I say it burns my skin and pricks me because I'm distraught being separated from my love. She brings me a little parrot and I say all I can hear in the parrot's chirping is his name. So elaboration on that lyric line. This is where the hand gestures can take on more elaborate meanings. So to begin with, um, we're gonna start with the one we did in Namaskaram, which was the pataka. And um, what are some things that pataka could show, do you think? Putting you on the spot here, Jonathan. For me, it's, uh, it's stop. Stop. Is what this okay. screams to me, yeah. Stop. Well, what else? Uh, hello. Hello. Okay. Anything else? Uh, pick me, pick right? me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now let's start thinking a little bit more outside of the box. Um, what about if I was to say mine? That's mine. Mm -hmm. Or this is yours. I can say come here. Go there. Okay. I'm going to stand up so you can see my whole body um, and get a little bit more of this. Then I would say mine, yours. Come here. Go there. <gasps> you did it. <laughs> I right? express shock. I can show a box. I can show the waves of an ocean. I can show a path that I'm walking down and taking steps. I can show clouds gathering in the sky or a woman's breast. I can say I'm gonna chop off his head. And I can say, no, please don't. So all of this with the hand gesture of Pataka. Now Pataka can also take on inanimate objects. It can become a piece of paper that I'm writing on, or a book that I'm reading, or a window that I'm throwing open, or a door that I'm closing, right? So it can take on inanimate objects like a shield and a sword. So these are all with the single hand gesture of Pataka. Okay? Um, similarly, all the hand gestures, all 28, have multiple uses and multiple meanings. And um, there are charts online. I think maybe on the Noise Within website, we might also have a chart that's accessible that has all 28. I'm going to very quickly go through them and try to teach you all 28 so you get a feel for it so we're going to do it right over i'll just say here. briefly i'm feeling very embarrassed that i could only think of three oh no uh, don't don't to use it and, and look at you guys so I thank you for that live and i always get i always get stop i always get hello goodbye um when it's a younger crowd i get talk to the hand that's another one <laughs> but yeah um you can also do, uh, I think of the video that you guys sent out prior to this as the preview. There's shading your eyes from the sun. So you can change your facial expression to also change the meaning. So that's what I meant by context. For example, if I take two patakas to cover my ears and have delight on my face, maybe the story is that I'm delighted by the loud pops of fireworks on 4th of July. Right? But let's say it's a big, scary thunderstorm or there's a gunshot that I hear. It's the same positioning and the same hand gesture, but my facial expression and emotion will tell a different story, right? So, um, so that's where the context and facial expressions also come into play. All of this stuff, um, the hand gestures, the body positions, um, the emotions, they're all, um, St structured vocabulary that's been established in a treatise called the Natya Shastra. So the Natya Shastra is comparable to Aristotle's poetics. 
And um, all of the stuff is identified and codified in the Natya Shastra. And we have nine basic emotions that are codified in the Adunaya Darpana, which we will get to shortly. Okay, so going back to the hand gestures, let's try them. So we have, trying to figure out my camera angle here, Pataka, three Pataka, Ardha Pataka, Kattari Mukha. So Kattari Mukha, you're bringing your middle finger forward. Uh huh and your pointer finger back. So I like to think of pataka as like the whole hand. Ardha means, uh, three pataka, I like to think of it as three quarters of the pataka as left standing. <laughs> That's sort of my cheat to remember three pataka. Ardha means half. So this is half a pataka, okay? Kattari mukha, I remember by sort of the word, again, it's a cheat. Um, I think of cutting and scissors, and this sort of has that scissor look to it. So kattari mukha. Then we have mayura which is the ring finger and the thumb. Mayura means peacock, and this is often used to show a peacock, okay? Then we have Ardha Chandra. Ardha Chandra means half moon. So here it's like Pataka, except the thumb is out, okay? Um, Ardha means half again, Chandra is moon, Ardha Chandra. Then we have Aralo. I'm taking my thumb and putting my ring finger, I mean my pointer finger resting on top. Uh-huh, Aralo. And then I drop the ring finger like I do for three pataka. This is Sukhatundaka. I don't know why this is so hard for me. I, I feel like it's a workout for your fingers. So I'm gonna try and keep up, but don't let me slow you down because I'm, I'm like exercising your fingers. This is Mushti, a fist. Shikara, a thumbs up. Then we have Kapito. Okay. Then we have Katakamukha, which is what we did for Namaskaram, the very beginning. Katakamukha. Often in Bollywood, they call this the bunny or the deer. Okay. And I always think you don't want bunnies with droopy ears, perked up ears. They're happy bunnies. They're not sad bunnies. So they're happy bunnies. Okay. Um, so this is Katakamukha. Then we have Suchi, Chandrakala. Chandrakala is crescent moon. So again, Chandra means moon. And so Chandrakala is a crescent moon. Padmakoso, this is a cupped hand, sort of like if you were to rinse your mouth <laughs> or gather some water or drink some water using your hand if you didn't have a cup, right? Um, so it's, it's rounded, Padmakoso. Now, if you flatten this uh, palm part, sorry, I'm trying to figure this out, palm part out so that only the top knuckles are curved, this is Sarpashishika, and this is often used to show a serpent head. And again, the name Sarpashishika, I think of serpent, right? So Sarpashishika, Mrugashishika, okay, so these, the fingers are straight, thumb and pinky are out, Mrugashishika, Sima Mukha. So here are the two middle fingers connect with the thumb, Sima Mukha. Kangolo. So this um, is often show, used to show a rosebud or a small box. Um, to get there, you can either have your hands like this and then bend that ring finger. That's one way of getting there. The other way is to go to three pataka and then all the fingers that are remaining standing bring together. So Kangolo. Then we have Alapadma, which is a flower or lotus hand. Then we have Chatura. Okay, so it's the three fingers, the thumb is in the middle, and the pinky is out, Chatura. The next one is a bumblebee, it's a Brahmara. So you're gonna take your pointer finger, roll it in, connect your middle finger to your thumb, and this is a bumblebee. And in India, we have black bumblebees that make the sound brr, 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 brr. So hence the name Brahmara. So this is Brahmara Hasta. Okay. Then we have Hamsa Hasyo. Okay, this is often the one you think of in yoga and meditation, right? Hamsa Hasyo. 
Hamsa Pakshika. So here the thumb is in. It's three fingers again, but instead of the thumb being out, the thumb is tucked in. Okay. Then we have um, Samdam Sam, Mukala Shaiva, Tamra Churo, which is a hook, Rishula Kaha. Very good. So um, in India, it's a oratory, it traditionally was an oratory art form. So there's Sanskrit shlokas that go with everything. Um, so just like uh, we have the alphabet song of A, B, C, D to remember our order for alphabet, we have a, uh, a shloka or a song that goes for the single hand gestures. Then we also have shlokas for each hand gesture. So all the variations and meanings of pataka has its own shloka. So we have 28 shlokas, each one for each hand gesture. And then we have double hand gesture. So what's a double hand gesture? It's a combination where you're using both your hands. So for example, if you take two patakas and put it together to prayer, you get Anjali Hasta. If you take um, two Ardha Chandras and put one on top of the other, you get a fish, which is Matsya. So there's single hand gestures and double hand gestures. I'm going to get up and sort of uh, demo quickly the shloka of the single That's hand great. gestures. And then I'm going to tell a little story using the hand gestures so you can sort of see that up on its feet. And awesome. see which, and when I do the story, see which uh, hand gestures you guys recognize from the 28. Pataka, three pataka, or the pataka, Katarinka, Mayura, or the Chandra, Aralo, Sukundaka, Murshi, Shikarahasta, Kapito, Katakamka, Suchi, Chandrakala, Padmakoso, Sarpashishaka, Murashishaka, Sima Muka, Tango, no, Sola Padma, Chatura, Brahmarahasta, Hamsa Hasio, Hamsa Pakshaka. So that was um, the shloka of all 28 hand gestures. Now I'm going to tell a little story. So the first hand gesture I'm going to use is suchi. One day, early in the morning, when the sun was rising, I picked up my pot and went down to the riverbank to fill it with water. There, across the bank, I saw a little baby elephant coming for his morning drink and a little shower. He was so cute. And on the other side, I saw a beautiful peacock coming and opening all of his heavens. I then picked up my pot and returned back to my home. That is amazing and, and so beautiful. Um, and I'm noticing that we have a little over 10 minutes left. So <laughs> we clearly learned too much for this brief conversation, but that's okay. We have to have you back. Um, I think though, it would be really awesome if we prioritize at least one of the videos we wanted to show. Absolutely. Do you want to go back to the emotion video or do you want to wait till the end for the uh, the second video? Um, let's do the second video, I guess. Okay. Or if we have time, maybe at the end, both back to back. Right. Is fine too. Great. Yeah. So do you want to go to emotion or rhythm? We were going to cover both, um, but we may not have time. Let's go to rhythm. I think you guys saw a little bit of the emotion with the demo of how we use the hand gestures. The basic thing of the emotion is that we have different facial expressions um, and, and body language that we use to show different emotions. And we have in India um, a treatise called the Abhinaya Darpana that has codified the nine basic emotions. So in that, you know, we cover everything like love, disgust, anger, you know, peace, uh, contentment. So all of these emotions are covered and all their nuances. So for example, in love, the love you feel as a 15 year old 
for the boy you have a crush on is very different than the love you feel as a mature married woman who's have has had her husband for 40 years or the a love that a mother would feel for a child or the love or devotion um, somebody might feel for a divine being like a god or somebody that they worship so there are all these different expressions of love um, and so all of that is codified and, and explored in our dance style and is, it comes through story as well. Um, now, the last aspect I wanted to talk about is rhythm. And in rhythm, um, one of the main things to know about Indian dance and music is, and music can be its own workshop by itself, <laughs> um, but that we have basically two strong musical systems in India. We have a North Indian musical system called Hindustani music. Um, this might be uh, familiar, especially from a Western perspective, when you're familiar with Ravi Shankar, with the sitar, um, tabla playing, um, the drums, the tablas, which uh, Zakir Hussain is famous for. Um, so all of that is from Hindustani music, which is a North Indian musical system. And dance forms like Kathak perform to Hindustani music. In South India, um, we have a dance style, uh, we have a music style called Carnatic music. So Carnatic music has different instrumentation and it also has um, its own structure. Um, and Bharatanatyam is performed to Carnatic music, usually. I mean, in modern times now, we do a lot of fusion and expansion, but traditionally, Carnatic music is its base. Um, both, dance, both music styles have ragas, which are melodic phrases, and thalas, which are rhythmic phrases. But the ragas and thalas of Hindustani music are distinct and different than the ragas and thalas of Carnatic music. Okay, so in Carnatic music, um, which is what we do with Bharatanatyam, we have five basic rhythms that we begin with. And then in the phrasing um, and exploration of these rhythms, we have seven various combinations for each rhythm. So it gives us a basic foundation of 35 rhythm patterns to play in. Now, as you get more advanced, this then multiplies into various other combinations. But as a very basic, we have 35 rhythm patterns we play with. We don't have time to go into 35 today, so we're just going to explore the first five really quickly. Okay? So in India, you'll also hear um, both in North Indian music and South Indian music, as well as in dance styles, verbalized bowls. This is sort of like scat is in jazz music. Um, but in Indian music, it's codified. So each thing that's uttered corresponds to either the footwork the dancer is doing or to the placement of where the drummer would be hitting his drum. So lots of times in India, when you want to start studying drumming, before you even get a drum in your hands, you'll learn to utter the bowls and where that placement is. Because the tha is always going to be hit on a certain part of the drum to create that sound of tha. The is a different part of the thom, is a different part of the drum, etc. So um, even when we do our five rhythms right now, I'm going to be saying some bowls. I'm going to teach you the bowls. Um, and they are codified bowls. So the first rhythm that we're going to go with is um, four beats. This is very similar to what we're familiar with in Western music, four, four time, um, or as a dancer, eight counts, right? Um, so we're going to clap, and we're going to go da, da, di, mi. So I'm clapping, followed by a finger count. So ka, ka, di, mi. Ka, ka, ju, no. Ka, ka, di, mi. Ka, ka, ju, no. Okay. Um, when there's a live orchestra, the singer or vocalist or conductor of the orchestra will often be keeping what we call talam or tal. This is that rhythm or that beat. That way everybody in the orchestra knows which part of the phrase they're on. And they have that set beat. We're going to demo this with our footwork. So just like in tap dancing, you create sounds and rhythm with your feet. In Bharatanatyam, we create sounds and rhythm with our bare feet. So for Thakkadini, I'm going to slap, drop my heel, hit my toes. Drop right here. So, ka, ka, di, mi. Ka, ka, di, mi. Ka, ka, di, 
The last thing I did was just a cap to end it all off <laughs> and to close it. Okay. So just like we had that with the four beats, we have three beats, five beats, seven beats, and nine beats. So three beats. I'm just going to stand into all of it. Um, three beats goes da, he, da, da, he, da. It's a triplet, so I like what you would have as a waltz, a three, four time. Da, he, da, da, he, da. Five beats goes da 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 he da 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 he da one two three four five one two three four five so we're gonna go da 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 he da 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 now seven beats can be combined with three and four, or four and three. So I can go da ki da da ka dim, da ki da da ka dim. One two three, one two three four, one two three four five six seven. Or I can flip it and go da ka dim, da ki da da ka dim, da ki da. One two three four, one two three, one two three four, one two three. The variation is where that strong accent falls, the hit of the beat. Falls on a different beat, right? So if we go, or now if I combine them, let's say I do. So that's where you can get into fun, intricate patterns. The same thing goes for nine beats. Nine beats is a combination of four and five, or flipping it five and four. So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So when you put all of these together, you can get intricate footwork. I'm just gonna demo a little bit because I have neighbors below me. But um, here we go. So I can go. That sure shows the footwork. Now, in Bharatanatyam, in Kathak, everything's done with the feet predominantly. In Bharatanatyam, we play with these rhythms even with our head shakes, our eyes, and our hand movements or body movements. So, for example, I could do it with a walk. I could go. Right, so I did it with the walk and at the end with the look. It's really wonderful. And you know, I'm noticing we, we have a little bit of challenges with the connectivity. So I'm glad we have two videos because if I don't see on one, I'm seeing on the okay. other. So we're getting the sense that I, I certainly believe. Um, would now be a good time to, to see all of this in action in Absolutely. one of these videos? Um, if you want to see all of it, I'd say the second video. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to the second video. So we'll load that up in just a moment. And as you're loading that up, um, I'm just going to say, so this is the, it's a piece called Ardhanadishwara. It's the concept of Shiva as half man and half woman. It's the duality, the feminine and masculine combined. You'll notice that they're blessing with the Paka Mushka.
Oh. You'll hear the bowls now. Thumb noon. Thumb num. So everything that the dancers are doing so far, except for the pose, was in pure dance. The abstract movement of Natya, I mean, of uh, Nritha uh, and dancing. Now you see how I'm doing the beat, but just with my head shake, not with my foot necessarily. And he's shaking, uh, Shiva has a small drum, so that's what he was shaking. I love it. It's so powerful, mm -hmm. and I, I just watch it for, for <laughs> so much longer. Um, well, why don't you guide us through our, our closing grounding? It's been Absolutely. such wonderful sharing this time with you, Shivani. Do we, do we have a minute or two to watch the other clip? Or Yes, let's do that, and then we can end with the grounding Thank after you. that. Thank you. Wonderful. And the reason I want to share this next clip is because it sort of um, emphasizes more the emotion and storytelling aspect. So in this piece, um, it's the end of the piece. Um, the lady in the piece has, uh, she has already lost her father and her husband at war. She has raised her son to be a warrior and has just gotten news that he's died on the battlefield. But the messenger says he's been stabbed in the back and was running away from the fight like a coward. And she's full of shame. She's like, I, I can't believe I birthed a coward. She's a warrior woman. And then she says, no, I, I don't believe that. I know my son and he would have died fighting. I need to see for myself. So she goes to the battlefield. So this is the segment of the dance where she d decides to go see for herself at the battlefield. And when she gets there, she sees um, all the horses and elephants that are the carcasses of all the uh, killed horses and elephants. And then she finds her son and rolls him over, realizes that no, he was stabbed in the chest and she's filled with pride only to then realize that she's lost her last family member and that to her son. So she says, I have to see for myself. She takes her shawl and wraps it. When she gets her, she takes in that scene with all the dead bodies and hearts. And everything destroyed. The elephants are dead. Where's my little boy? She finds him. She rolls him over. He said he was stabbed in the chest. He died fighting. And then she realizes that he's been holding his lifeless body. Wow, I have chills. It's so it's it's gorgeous and visceral and and, and violent and physical and all yeah. these things. So, um, thank you. Do you want to lead us through Absolutely. your clothes? Do it. Thank you so much, Shivani. So let's start with our hands and cut the cobble cup. 
We stamp our right foot. Sai. Sai. Sai to the 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 sai. Shivani, it's such an honor to share this space with you. You are such a wealth of knowledge and such a, a stunning artist. So I, I so value our friendship, our collaboration, and your generosity. Thank you for joining us again. Absolutely. It was such a joy. Well, I have to do a second session because there's so much we you and I clearly. talked about. <laughs> we still need to share. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Stay well. And I cannot wait to share our physical space with you again and have you back at the theater. I Thanks again. As well. Thank you. And thank you to it's Jeff and Julia as well and, and Sam on tech. Lovely. Well, we're going to bring back Jeff and Julia to wrap oh. us out. And Shafani, thank you again. That was extraordinary. That was absolutely amazing. Shivani, it was, uh, as, as uh, Jonathan says, it's, uh, it uh, gives you goosebumps. And uh, it's, it's wild to see. I can see watching her work, the the influence it had on flamenco. It's 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 wild to watch. How extraordinary! Thank you, Jonathan. And we're going to pay for your uh, twenty four hour fitness for fingers. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have like a six month course for you, yeah. <laughs> so that you'll be all over the place. So thank you everyone for joining us, and and we hope we'll to see you again. September eleventh will be our next Fridays at five, and it, it should be a wonderful conversation with our education director and um, some of our teaching artists. So uh, we hope to see all of you then. And again, Shivani, thank you so much for sharing your artistry uh, with the Noise Within. It's it's uh, absolutely beautiful. We miss you all, and we look forward to seeing you in a room together and giving each other a big hug. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.